Is this one? Uh, uh, um, okay, so uh, welcome to the NFE Bake, bake Off. So um, this is probably the first time we've had so many people from from the uh, um, NFE community, our, uh, vendors in the same room together. <laughs> so it's pretty exciting. Um, so this is. Um, this will be a great opportunity for you to uh, really get a good sense of where where the community's heading. And uh, for the people who were at the previous panel on the telecom roadmap, I think it'll be uh, quite enlightening. Um, on, I do, and it's unfortunate we only have 40 minutes, so we're gonna get going, because I think we have a lot to cover. Uh, so I'm gonna get started with some introductions. And the first question I'm going to ask is, who are you and uh, what is your company doing with NFE to get started? Uh, my name is uh, Sridhar Ramaswamy. I'm a principal engineer uh, in Brocade. Uh, Brocade's a software networking uh, BU. Uh, our company, uh, as you might know, uh, has a lot of different products uh, in the NFE space, uh, including an, an, uh, an SDN controller, which is a, a commercial version of an ODL. Uh, open daylight uh, uh, controller, and we have a uh, lot of different uh, VNFs uh, that we currently support, like uh, virtual routers to virtual EPC, uh, uh, VD VADX, and there are few many others uh, uh, that we support today. Uh, in general, our company, uh, Brocade, operates in the space of uh, NFE and the new what's called the new IP. So, so, so we are very much uh, in the space, uh, trying to yield this transition towards NFE. Uh, from the old way of operating things into the new way. So, Hi, uh, my name is uh, Shishir Agrawal. Uh, I am a product manager at Juniper Networks. Um, I'm basically responsible for their virtual firewall product. So again, in context of NFE, that would be one of the key VNFs that a lot of customers are looking for uh, to deploy. Uh, and also, I, have, I manage some of their uh, mid-range uh, physical firewall platforms. Uh, with reference to Juniper's involvement with NFP, I mean, we were engaged uh, very early on, right from early 2013. Um, uh, we are actually kind of on the forefront evangelizing uh, where NFP and HC architecture is going. And again, we have a lot of investment in terms of engineering and architecture, uh, working with a lot of uh, tier one and tier two service providers, really pushing uh, different use cases with SDN and NFP. Uh, in terms of solution, again, broadly, we have uh, kind of the NFVI um, components with our carrier grades, such as routers and firewalls. Uh, we have an SDN controller with, with Contrail. Uh, and then we have uh, essentially uh, VNFs. So we have virtual SRX, which is our virtual firewall, and virtual MX, which is our virtual router. And we have a bunch of other VNFs in the pipeline. And finally, we have uh, a complete Mano solution as well with, with uh, our Contrail cloud platform. So again, uh, we have the complete end-to-end -end solution, which is very open for our customers to really transition and move to NFV. I'm uh, Bob Hedleton. I'm a cloud uh, NFV software architect with Alcatel Lucent. I'm in the Cloud Innovation Center, uh, where we work with all of the Alcatel, Luc excuse me, Alcatel Lucent uh, portfolio products, as well as third-party products and uh, ecosystem vendors to deploy all sorts of applications uh, in a cloud NFV SDN environment. Um, Alcatel Lucent has a whole portfolio of uh, EPC, IMS, um, OSS products, uh, basically everything uh, the telco, in the telco portfolio, as well as specific NFV SDN products like uh, Nuage and CloudBand. Um, and um, at this point, basically the whole portfolio has been um, refocused on NFV, and uh, that's uh, definitely the direction going forward. Hi, uh, my name is Sudhir Ketamaka. Um, I lead a product development team, uh, primarily responsible for the net um, management and orchestration uh, for the network functions uh, in Ericsson. Um, but, you know, uh, having in that um, role gives me an opportunity to look at both um, Ericsson's own uh, network functions and uh, the roadmap, um, as well as um, inter you know integrating with the uh, various other vendors uh, solutions. Um, in addition to, I mean, I, I think uh, I don't know how we can give unique answers here about 
you know what our companies are doing but um, you know one thing i wanted to add is uh, also a pretty big player in the uh, systems integration space working with uh, some of the you know tier 1 customers at this point but um, when it comes to the applications yes virtual router virtual epc uh, virtual ims they are, they are you know pretty in a, in a very good state with nfe and all other uh, suite is also um, towards uh, the NFE direction at Ericsson. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Tariq Khan with uh, HP's NFE business unit. And uh, I think this is uh, a group. Thank you, Beth, for organizing this and uh, having this uh, discussion. So my role within HP is to try to figure out uh, how we can how we can use cloud and network virtualization technologies and apply it to, to NFE. So kind of the, the, some of the discussions that are happening over here. And let me see if I can try to give a unique answer where we know at HP what we are not doing. So we are actually not in the, the VNF business. We do have some VNFs, but that's where we feel the, the network functions, the, the innovation, that's where it's going to happen. And uh, with, with the larger e equipment providers and also smaller ISVs who are coming in, um, what we're focusing on is, is the platform. And the platform essentially goes from NFEI, both physical and virtual infrastructure, the, the uh, virtual infrastructure manager, OpenStack uh, being providing part of it, and the uh, management and orchestration. So those are the areas that we are focusing on so that uh, uh, folks like uh, Verizon and, and other operators can just focus on, <laughs> on looking at what VNF to bring in to the platform and be able to run it in their networks. Thank you, Derek. I'm uh, Prakash from Huawei, and uh, I represent the R&D uh, in the, uh, what do you call, the standards. And mainly, if I give you a one-liner for Huawei, we are a full solution provider for NFE. So we do end-to-end -end everything. And of course, the biggest strength is 75% of the carriers in the world are our customers, and they, they, they bring most of our revenue. So our revenue model is based on being open, and that's why we are one of the, uh, what do you call, the members of the op NFE, open platform for NFE. Our participation in it is never questioned, because we have been in almost every uh, name you can think of NFE, whether it's MEC, whether it is, uh, related to optical. So we have a wide range of product line. Currently for NFE, what we are doing is open platform so that we can establish the standards which will help us bring our product line, which are already there, but to make it interoperable. That is the main focus for us. Okay, And that's interoperability is the only word I would like to use here. Thanks. That's a great intro to my next question. Uh, which is, by the way, not in order. Just throwing you some curves here. Um, so how does your NFE products, since obviously all of you have some NFE product in some form, um, incorporate OpenStack? And how does your company contribute to the, o how much does your com company contribute to the overall community efforts? Which is, I think, relevant to this conference and this community. So we'll start with that. Me? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, um, so the OpenStack is the de facto uh, virtual infrastructure manager for Ericsson, um, any solution that we provide. So uh, we are adapting OpenStack uh, both for our internal IT as well as uh, the network functions. Um, from a contribution perspective, we have made uh, contributions in um, specifically in uh, Nova Neutron and Silometer areas. And uh, these days, it has been more in the OPNFV. Uh, it's not a direct contribution, um, but what we are trying to do is stabilize those requirements for the NFV and uh, push that towards the OpenStack. Um, and we, we partner with uh, uh, various OpenStack uh, vendors uh, across the you know, industry. Uh, so yeah, um, OpenStack has been our cloud store, has been part of our cloud story for um, almost three years, three three and a half years now. Okay. So um, 
Brocade really believes uh, in enabling almost all their uh, products uh, orchestratable through uh, OpenStack. Uh, so our, we have our switching lines and routers, the switches like the VDX uh, and the MLX and ICX. They are uh, they all con uh, you can orchestrate through Neutron. So we have Neutron plugins, something that we brought in. Uh, we also have all for uh, our virtual assets, the virtual VNFs that we have. We we are we basically have uh, plugins enabled through Neutron. So we made sure all of our products are orchestratable through OpenStack. Uh, so that's something we made sure. Uh, this is an interesting and uh, an, an important ecosystem for Brocade, and uh, and it needs to be all of our products needs to be enabled. And beyond that, again, um, the, our HDN controller is something that's validated uh, with Neutron. Um, we strongly believe uh, the, the, the Neutron, uh, for the success of Neutron, and and, that, and it would definitely enable uh, Brocade products to be consumed through Neutron APIs. And beyond Neutron, we are making significant contribution in the, our involvement in uh, the TACR project, which is the HC Mano uh, OpenStack project uh, that's gaining really uh, big momentum in the last few cycles. Um, so again, I'm, I'm leading that project, but we are actually heavily contributing to that project as well. So that's. Yeah, so again, uh, from, from Juniper's perspective, uh, we have uh, Contrail, which actually interacts with uh, OpenStack via the standard Neutron plugins. Uh, we have Contrail Cloud, where we have uh, it's essentially a cloud management platform where uh, we have Juniper's OpenStack distro as part of it, and we have made contributions to Neutron. Uh, from a VNF perspective, uh, we have uh, Virtual SRX. Uh, again, we have plugins, uh, firewall as a service plugin for OpenStack for that. And there was a talk this morning where we shared uh, some ideas around how we can enable uh, um, to provide very similar capabilities that customers have on, on, on firewalls in a physical environment with OpenStack. So uh, scheduling policies and doing logging and things like that. So. Again, we expect going forward, we'll be making a lot more contributions in the firewall as a service plugin, plugin side. And uh, I guess some of you might know that with, with Contrail, we have actually open sourced it. So we have open source, uh, open Contrail, which again, we are trying to drive the adoption of SDN controllers. We have, uh, that, that's the open Contrail piece that we have. Um, at Akuta Lucent, um, OpenStack has pretty much become the de facto platform as with everyone else up here. Um, and uh, our cloud band node, cloud band management system are both built on top of OpenStack. Uh, Nuage works very close with OpenStack. Um, all of our portfolio products are uh, designed at this point to run on top of OpenStack. <coughs> and um, in terms of contributions, um, in the last probably six months, um, we've really ramped up contributions to uh, areas like heat. Um, Mistral is, uh, is another project that we're contributing heavily to, uh, the Tacker project as well. Um, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, we just recently started a new project uh, that we're doing, starting with the community uh, for root cause analysis. And I'm going to mess up the name, but I think it's Vitrage. Uh, thank you. Um, and so um, I think it took us probably a little while to get started, um, as with any large company, getting through the lawyers and figuring out all the different IP uh, issues took some time. But I think at this point, uh, we're really committed to OpenStack. Tar? Thank you. Uh, um, with HP, like I said, uh, we focus on the platform. And OpenStack absolutely is the platform. So we have a uh, couple of different flavors, distributions of OpenStack. So for NFV specifically, we have a distribution of OpenStack that's just meant for network workloads, uh, Helion carrier grade. Um, within the, the OpenStack distribution, you know, our, I believe for the last three or four uh, releases, HP has been either number one or number two in number of commits, number of uh, reviews. So we have been uh, kind of integrated OpenStack in our DNA, uh, changed all our cloud solutions to be, to be powered by OpenStack, both private, managed cloud, and, and so on and so forth. And then around OpenStack, we have a number of solutions, SDN controllers, our, our NFVI, our, our, all the components basically work. Um, besides uh, upstream contributions, we're, we're making sure all our products are validated with OpenStack. All right, Prakash. Last but not least. OK, so what we have, uh, we have two philosophy. One is bottom up, another is top down. The pain point is in the top down, not bound areas. OSS, BSS carriers are really affected by that. So we are doing that through the Tosca 
and various uh, modeling and all that. So that service modeling aspect of it to bring down on the product. Bottom up, of course, OpenStack is the king. There is no question, Vim level. And SDN is another part of it where we are participating both in ONOS and the ODL. Uh, ODL for enterprise, ONOS for the carrier grade. And our product lines all are mapping so that we are able to do in an open manner. We work with Ericsson, we work with Brocade, we work with Cisco, every one of them. We are participating in the open platform for NFE so that we can bring all this together as a company which is having such a workforce and such a large 200 plus people of us are participating in open platform for NFE and OpenStack is the own major upstream for us. So you go back from six to seven, Diabolo onwards up to um, Liberty, we have got at least one module focus every time. So we started with NOAA, we have done with heat, we have done with neutron, silometer, and uh, currently we are of course uh, bringing the edge computing. So we are participating everywhere. We want people who are good at leading to lead and we help them, not that we cannot lead, but we want to make sure we fill in the gaps, especially like in OpenFE, we have focused on testing so that products can be certified, tested, and it can be released to the customer uh, for usage in the greenfield as well as in brownfield areas. So thank you. Um, so I don't know how many of you saw the previous panel, but this, this relates to it. Um, so the telcos, you know, me as a customer is obviously we're interested in NFE, but as far as I know, none of us have actually deployed it in production. Um, so what do you see as the challenges as to why NFE has not been widely adopted in the industry today? So, want to start with Prakash? Yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> we are seeing the challenge coming. Uh, so when we started with NFE, HC NFE, we said that, okay, CapEx, it disappeared. OpEx, it disappeared. So right now it is the, uh, how do we enable the value chain? so that the carrier really gain out of it. So the challenge has been that uh, we say something and then it hurts us the very next time. So when we say, oh, we will reduce the capex, did it really? No. Yes, it did to a certain extent, but it, it's not the solution. OPEX, yes, it did reduce maybe 15, 16%. Now the new uh, services that can be brought in, that is the key. So even if we start with a POC, okay, POC is ending POC, they, really bring people together, that's fine. But at the end of the day, you need a carrier grade, uh, mission critical uh, platform, plus the VNFs, whether it is a VPC, or whether it is a VIMS, or uh, whether it is for the mobile, or even for fixed networks. So that's the challenge we are facing, and getting the standards and the de facto standards like OpenStack converge is the most difficult part we are, that's a challenge. And that's we are trying to address uh, to see that both of them move uh, closer to each other so that the industry can adopt based on uh, platforms that are there from like Fusion Sphere from Huawei, et cetera. So, Tark. Sure. Um, I think like the last, uh, last uh, panel was talking about, the issues are threefold. They are organizational issues to be able to, to introduce this virtualization. The uh, organization, especially the large telcos, they have to change their organization. Most of them are in the path of it. There, someone, some of them have implemented it, which absolutely is going to help. But now the structure is being put in place. There are technological challenges. There are some very specific technology uh, uh, obstacles that need to be addressed to be able to not just virtualize because NFE is not just about virtualization. It's the orchestration and automation that goes along with it as well. So some of those uh, gaps that we are, we are trying to be able to address. And the third one is just, just the operationalization or the support, new support structures that need to put, be put in place. There's no certification or standards body that's defining you know, what SLA, now that operators are gonna be running their platforms with, with functions coming from different providers, to be able to figure out for the function provider to sign up for a 5.9's SLA, what, what does operator need to be able to provide to the function provider so that, that the operator becomes a provider to the function provider. So some of these things, operational issues, technology, and organizational barriers are putting through. But right now, if you look, there's a lot of progress, and I think a number of operators, what, what we are seeing is that they are at the cusp of going into field trials or maybe into produ 
production. Yeah, um, I agree with uh, what Tariq and uh, Prakash has said. And uh, in addition to that, I mean, I come from like OSS, PSS side of the business and uh, um, operations like uh, Tariq mentioned is a huge thing. You know, I, 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 I think we still have maturity that is required in the NFVI and uh, the WIM uh, layer support for the service assurance and the uh, FCAPS side and you know, uh, one of the examples is uh, yesterday or the day before during the keynote, uh, we saw the you know the statistics about you know um, adaptation of various projects in OpenStack. We see Silometer has been one of them you know uh, one of the early projects, but you know the adaptation is pretty low. Um, and when it comes to telcos, these kind of things are extremely important and. Uh, uh, they are the last ones to be looked at by you know um, any community. So there, there is some maturity mis uh, required there. And from um, from Mano's standpoint, you know, which is another area of interest for me, um, um, operators operators are mixing and matching things here, right? I mean, for good reason, obviously. I think that's one of the benefits of. Uh, the I think whole we have one of everything. Yeah. <laughs> so exactly. So and uh, you know, and the standards are not um, matured, which means you know we test with our own systems before you go out, and when you try to integrate with other things, you know there are there are issues, and these are challenges. They are not complaints, but you know that slows down the process a little bit. So I, I think in in reality, um, um, there, these are the challenges that everybody has to face. And uh, I think we made a good headway in the past year or so. Uh, hopefully, things get more standardized in the, uh, in the future. Oh, Bob? <laughs> yeah, I definitely think standardization is a huge issue. Um, you know, we don't have Bellcore setting standards for us anymore, uh, which is a huge challenge for the providers. Um, I think the other one of the other major issues is interoperability with existing systems. So telcos have a huge amount of embedded OSS systems, embedded BSS systems. Um, they're not simply going to rip all these systems out. So that means we have to be able to talk to SNMP, we have to be able to talk to Corbo, we have to talk to all these technologies that probably were defined before many of us in the room were born. Um, but that's simple fact of life. The telcos are not going to start from Greenfield. Um, and so when you combine that with the need to do certain things like service orchest orchestration, um, which does not have defined interfaces yet, does not have defined specifications, um, it's really kind of demonstrates how early we are in the process. Uh, things are moving very quickly, and I think one of OpenStack's strengths is also one of the challenges because there's more than one way to do it. No matter what you're trying to do, there's more than one way to do it. And you have to decide, do I want to use heat? Do I want to use Tacker, do I want to use Nova directly? Do I want to use containers? Um, and you know, as an architect, I have to go through and make all those decisions for every single project, and it's a huge challenge. Uh, sometimes it's easier to have a small tool set and have more restrictions, but that's not, that's not what we have. We have many, many, many choices, and that's one of the challenges. Yeah, so again, I think I think uh, I agree with the others. I mean, interoperability and uh, uh, really career grade uh, solutions that service providers look for, I think that is, that is maturing, and I think we'll see more adoption of NFP. I mean, personally, on Juniper side, we are engaged with the whole XCP, virtual CP. We are seeing a lot of interest, and we expect some early deployments, hopefully this year. Um, just talking about VNFs, uh, that's, that's kind of my focus area. Uh, as customers are looking to kind of replace their existing physical firewalls to virtual firewalls, I think there is some more work that needs to happen to, to bring the same level of performance and uh, and functionality in the NFP environment. So for example, today virtual firewalls cannot get to that level of performance. So I think as an industry, we need to evolve to more of a scale up, like how do we get more from a single virtual um, solution as well as how can we scale out. So within OpenStack, things like auto scaling and all needs to improve so we can distribute the load. I think many good points have been covered. So uh, from a challenge point of view, I don't see this as a challenge. I think we are a lot of things work in progress. Uh, I think a lot of ground has been uh, covered, uh, uh, particularly on the compute side. I think we have spent a lot of uh, effort uh, in, in bringing the feature set uh, that's uh, sort of career grade, if I may use the term. Uh, but we got to finish the job. I think I think we have a lot of effort went into NOVA in making 
the VNS to be perform as as na as well it's supposed to, uh, so that it can match uh, the performance of a physical. But uh, we got to finish the job. I guess that's where uh, uh, we got to focus. I mean, that's uh, what I see as a challenge. And there is more work to be done in the orchestration. I guess again, we have taken initial steps. Uh, I think we got to finish the job that we have started. That things are in flight. Uh, I see more that as in progress than a challenge at this point. Thank you. Um, so, so here's another one. Um, I think we all agreed, and again, we mentioned this at the previous panel, there's some gaping obvious holes in OpenStack uh, when it comes to being an NFV uh, platform. Uh, so what do you see as the missing capabilities, and what are you doing about it? I'll start with you. So uh, maybe touch base on the thing that I mentioned. Um, so one thing, again, in the last uh, three cycles, I can see uh, we have spent a lot of effort uh, in bringing the NFEI aspects of the stack up to career grade. Uh, the amazing amount of work that went into uh, into NOVA particularly. Uh, so what I see that's missing is uh, as we go up the chain, right? it's not just uh, uh, landing the VNF, it's, it's the orchestration piece that's that's clearly missing um, uh, in, so, so there are, if you go see how the NOVA compute is supposed to be uh, geared for an optimal placement, there are like n number of knobs you need to place it correctly before it, it would perform the way it's, uh, it would. So we, we cannot expect like uh, every operator to go learn those n number of knobs. So that's where I think there is a role for an orchestrator to basically simplify these things. We sort of need an easy button for all these amazing features that folks in NOVA and Neutron for things like SRA we have done. But now is the time to make those features easy to consume for the operators. And that's where the role for an orchestrator. I believe we are taking an inis initial stab using the Tacker project. Uh, again, using uh, a standard templates, but I guess I'd see that's one of the uh, significant gaps that we need to plug. Yeah, Tacker seems a little Immature, <laughs> undefined. It, it it's getting there. Uh, I guess uh, this is something we are iterating uh, really heavily uh, uh, these days. And uh, in fact, uh, we have a lot of interesting sessions that went. Uh, we have a lot of uh, ground to cover, but I think we had a very good start uh, with that with that project. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, uh, as you said, right, I think a lot of work has been done on an NFVI side, but I think we need to move up, and all of the other interfaces that we have defined, we need to start looking at a standard standardization and a standard protocol. So all of these service providers, who are basically looking for an open environment where they can plug and play, it becomes easier to mix and match different VNFs, OSs, and BSS solutions. So, so that's one. Also, again, uh, on the on the firewall side, I think uh, we, we need to look at how OpenStack can easily plug and play with uh, uh, different uh, kind of virtual network functions and the ease of how you can do deep packet inspections. All of that work needs to happen security as well. Too. Security is security <laughs> the key it's piece of uh, uh, kind of customers moving to NFE. Or, or so I think a lot of work can be done there uh, to, to enable our customers to be more secure in these environments. There was a comment made at the last session about um, what can the telcos do to contribute back. Um, and I think one of the things that the telcos can do is really help with standardization of interfaces. Um, standardize you know, how, these thing, how you want these things to talk to each other, um, how you want to handle alarms, how you want to handle measurements. Um, the fact is OpenStack has a lot of overlap between projects today. We have, uh, we have an application catalog in Tacker, we have an application catalog in Murano. Um, there's things that Solometer can do that Manaska can also do. Um, there's things that you know Heat can do that um, Senlin can also do. Um, and those overlaps really need to be kind of resolved, or at a minimum, uh, there needs to be some coalescence around one, I don't want to say one way to do it, but um, a set of requirements and required interfaces that we can start solving these problems using these different tools and, and understanding what the telcos actually want. Yeah, I'll, I'll just give an example of two uh, specific areas that uh, I can think of. Uh, um, one uh, from an operational point of view, like I mentioned before, uh, you know, resource uh, management, uh, resource reservations, etc. 
Um, so this e uh, is being uh, driven through again OPA and FV, uh, like I mentioned before. So you know, hopefully we will have solid requirements there, and then that, that will translate into uh, the VIM and FEI as well. And uh, and operationally, um, Doctor is another project that uh, Ericsson is pushing in the OPA and FV. Now, um, and, and when it comes to the gaps, uh, we talked about it, but uh, the Neutron uh, support for uh, you know, various things like layer three and MPLS, uh, et cetera. Um, from a, a contribution point of view, uh, Ericsson is engaged in the Gluon um, along with uh, a few other vendors and uh, operators as well. So the BGP VPN uh, uh, project is something that we are very much interested in and contributing towards. I think I'll uh, kind of talk and uh, maybe Bob going slightly the other way. So there's, uh, there, there's, of course, everyone says that NFE is introducing a big change. And one of the changes NFE is introducing is that it's making telcos move away from interfaces that are predefined, where people on the either side write solutions to it, to, to moving into an API-driven driven ecosystem. And, and what I would argue is that overlap between projects, overlap between different things, is a good thing. Because that means the innovation is happening at different places, and you're not just constrained by one thing. So, so I, I, I like you know, what Tacker is trying to do, absolutely greatest thing. Talking about promise, talking about doctor, you know, there's other ways of doing these things. I think what, what we basically need to be able to focus on is there's the steady state production environment that operators need. And that cannot be, you cannot be, be, be looking at the shiny new things that keep on coming out, which may be six months, a year down the line, is that the, we need to make sure that the, the production carrier grade, production quality solution, which essentially comes down to essentially the DEF core project, those are rock solid. There are some capabilities that are required, like EPA, enhanced platform awareness, is, is required to be able to get most out of the system. So, so there's some more work needed in Nova and Neutron to get those things. I mean, I agree that uh, uh, resource reservation or a little bit better resource scheduler is required. OpenStack has already taken some, some uh, steps towards taking scheduler outside of Nova, the, the sol scheduler solver some work over there so that this scheduler is able to schedule based on the VNF descriptors, the network dis service descriptors that have been defined by the, by the uh, VNF providers. Operators choose how they're going to deploy, and we, once these core capabilities are there, then, then, the, then we feel that, that you'll really be able to operationalize and let, let the abstraction work the way it's supposed to. So from uh, Huawei's perspective, uh, we have been trying to solve issues. And what we have done is, one of the main things we took up is from service pro provider point of view, service bundling, service chaining, uh, those are important for offering the service. So we have embedded ourselves into Neutron, we have got the port chain, the service chaining, which is one of the key pieces. and. Ab over and above it, we are trying to do the modeling, like uh, modeling of networks. So simple thing is, is computing the network or is network the computing? So uh, Scott McNeely, you remember the good old days, he says, <coughs> network is computing. And so that's the key. And so SDN, without SDN, you cannot do anything. Even though we have NFE, but the glue pieces, which can glue everything together, is the SDN. With open flow, without open flow. It's, it's a question of software defined networking. How you want to do it? Netconf you use, you use Yang model, you use uh, whatever Tosca, but all thing is modeling at the physical, modeling at the logical, bringing together all these pieces, use all that is available in OpenStack, whether it's NOAA, Neutron, Cinder, Silometer, whatever it takes to get the FCAPs that our people described here, that's the key. So we are trying to solve the problem. And that's the key message I would like you to carry. Any carrier, they know that it's not going to happen overnight. But we should be persistent in resolving the issues that are pain points for them. That's the key message from us. So thank you. Um, I, with, we have about um, 10 minutes left. So what I'd like to do is open it up to questions. 
and I've been asked to uh, have everybody stand in front of the microphone, otherwise you don't get recorded for, the, for posterity. So <laughs> there's a microphone in the middle. Hi, I uh, have two questions. One, like, can you please talk about our, your current adoption or what is the trend that you're seeing in the next six months? Second thing is, uh, it's, it goes with the uh, deficiency or like lack of capabilities with OpenStack. The HA is traditionally a problem and something that OpenStack is working towards it. But with with uh, this career grade five nine uh, uh, requirements, how do you um, manage that? Or how do you uh, bring up five nine av availability given the constraints of HA within OpenStack? Okay. Thank you. Who wants to take it up? I can take it up. We are having a project called Multisite. And we also have uh, been working with Ericsson, uh, the Kingbird. So these will address the requirement. Because the topology, if you look at a carrier, they have everything in XML files. And they have all geographical regions covered under different uh, uh, descriptors. And these descriptors have to be either imperative or uh, descriptive. You need to go through that and automate. And that's the key. And therefore, Parser, we have a project called Parser to allow transfer between different uh, formats and be able to uh, ensure that those are applied. And they apply to the FCAPS part of it so that you can get the, besides high availability, you also have performance reliability. And most of the mobile carrier always want 99.999% availability, which is the key. And that's what we are striving to do. Tark. Yeah, so there's two components of it, the insight availability and you know, multi-site availability. So insight availability is, if you, as, as you rightly pointed out, OpenStack has not made a statement on how do you make a highly available OpenStack environment. But there are people, and you know, us included, who have created, put a framework around it, and with our Helion carrier grade product, you do have five nines availability within a single site. And then when you go to a different other site, then the VNF needs to be able to, to today the, the state of the situation is that VNF needs to be able to provide that, that multi-site high availability. And, and, but because OpenStack has not, not put a stake in this, and in a couple of weeks we have the OPNFE summit, where we're looking at different ways of going about doing it, and I, I would put a plug in for OpenSAF, Open Service Availability for Framework, that has a very robust uh, service availability framework, and I would argue and would love the community to look at another open source project, OpenSAF, adopt it to, so that it's a common framework that we can use to protect the OpenStack platform, and then VNFs can, can leverage into the framework to provide availability at framework level as well. I just want to add a few more things. Uh, so I availability should be all about in the full stack, right? Of course, we need uh, the VIM NFEI should be highly, highly available. There are efforts going on in the Neutron to make, for example, the Neutron routers to be in the HA mode, right? And, and a multi-site is another way of uh, solving on the compute side. Uh, I believe there is also need for the VNF itself to be deployed in an HA uh, HA fashion, uh, perhaps using, that's where things around uh, affinity rules or perhaps anti-affinity rules, or even that's where smart VNF placement might pl will play a role, in my opinion, where you might need to uh, place these VNFs at different sites, perhaps for disaster recovery, right? And you had another question, I think we didn't indulge much on that. Um, so I believe you would, uh, my gut feeling is we will see a lot of these uh, momentum around uh, VCPE would pan out, I believe, in the next few cycles. Um, uh, at least uh, there is enough, there are tons of demos you might have seen in the last couple of summits. I hope uh, that will be your sort of the killer use case for NFE, uh, in, my, in my opinion. I think that's what I would expect to see in, the, in, this, uh, in this transition. Yeah, I think just, just building on that in terms of adoption, I mean, personally, we are seeing huge interest in virtual CPE, which is running those services in data center or cloud or for universal CPE where those services are run on-prem on a standard hit six hardware. So again, um, I mean, we are, I mean, obviously customers are in different stages. It's a spectrum. So customers are still starting. They want to learn more about it. Other customers, bigger service providers, you can name them. They are in more advanced stages. So we, we do expect some initial smaller deployments, <coughs> production deployments this year. 
Well, let me just add, in the telco world, things just move slowly. And that's just the way it is. It's slow because it takes us a long time. Because you know, when you when you take you know when you s dial in your tel cell phone, you want the call to go through. <laughs> Yeah. Um, you want to say something and then I think. Uh, yeah, I, I just a, wanted to address the HA uh, question. Yeah. Yes, I mean, if there are gaps, some of them are, have to be solved by the VNFs themselves. Um, but uh, if there are gaps, I mean, that's what we are filling in. I think the, um, the best way to do it, do it is instead of doing it in a proprietary fashion, if we can keep the, the spirit of uh, you know, open stack and openness in mind, I think that would be uh, helpful. So uh, with that, I think we actually have run out of time. So um, thank you, and uh, looking forward to thank you. more uh, conversations. <laughs>